That forecast, you definitely want to hear this. No one thinks it will happen to them, but last year in the U.S., 42 children died from being left in a hot vehicle. Pets and senior citizens also are at risk. A Kansas law taking effect Sunday makes it clear that if you act in good faith to get someone out of that situation, you won't be left footing the bill for the broken window or other damage. But would you know what to do to save a life? In tonight's To Your Health, we get a lesson from safety advocates. Intense summer sun can heat a car in mere minutes. It's jumping between 120 and 130. And if this were a real baby? The younger they are, the less able they are to cool off their own bodies. It could quickly turn deadly. When that internal temperature in a child reaches 104 degrees, that's when internal organ damage starts to happen. And at 107 degrees, that's when we can see a death from heat. A new Kansas law protects people from civil liability for any vehicle damage they might cause acting to get a vulnerable person or pet out of imminent danger. I think it's going to be helpful in those, those uh, dire, dire situations where we need to get into that car, you know, right now. But the Topeka Fire Department, Safe Kids, and Stormont Vale set up this demonstration to make sure if you do need to act, you act safely and smart. Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to try the handle, see if it's uh, unlocked. If it is locked, call out to see if the owner is nearby, then call 911. If that is a true medical emergency, I mean, going through the window is just the first part of it. We're going to have to start taking care of that child or that person. If the child or the dog can wait, the fire department can come in. We can pry open that door just enough to get this stick in here and work that lock and open the door that way. If that child or that uh, dog or it, even if it's an, uh, an elderly person is unresponsive or unable to get themselves out, then it might be time to go through the window. If you do feel you need to break in the window, you need to be careful about where on the window you're hitting. The center is the strongest part. It's not going to make a dent, but if you hit in the corners, you'll get in to save the person inside. You can use a hammer or a sharp tool like a screwdriver or punch. Even your car's antenna with a snap can do in a pinch. Also, choose your window wisely. The windshield is significantly stronger than the uh, side windows. It doesn't shatter into pieces. There's actually a thin layer of plastic in there as well that holds it all together. So right here, our victim would be on this side, the, uh, the driver's side rear. So we're going to use the, uh, the uh, passenger side, either rear or front, so that we're not, when we go through the window, we don't want to put more glass or patient in danger. Keep yourself safe from glass too. Yeah, it can cut you, but he's using that handle. You can wrap your arm maybe in, a, in your sleeve or something like that. Of course, the ideal is never having a child in this situation. Teresa Taylor of Safe Kids says create reminders for yourself. Some parents leave their cell phone in the back seat when they put the baby back there or a purse. Um, I've even heard of people taking off their left shoe and leaving it in the back seat because they're typically not going to walk into work or wherever without their shoe. Taylor says the new law is about looking out for one another. We want citizens to feel empowered to take action and not fear litigation. Among those hot car deaths, in more than half, a parent or caregiver unknowingly left a child in the vehicle. 18% were left intentionally, but in 27%, kids got into a car on their own. So to prevent that, be sure you're locking all vehicles all around your property so they can't accidentally get inside. And there are right. some requirements to the law also, so you have to stay with the person or pet once they're out until emergency crews arrive. We're going to post all of that information on WIBW.com. And the cell... A routine procedure left a young woman from St. Mary's fighting for her life. What followed brings us a story of faith, love, and you might even say a Christmas miracle. Mallory Mitchell and Kyle Hammer planned to walk this path behind her parents' St. Mary's home on their wedding day. We were going to get married this last September. They had no idea in sickness and in health would be tested before they even spoke the vows. Mallory went in to get her wisdom teeth removed over spring break. Pretty routine for a 21-year-old college student, except some sort of complication sent Mallory into cardiac arrest. When I got there, Mallory was intubated and had a machine breathing for her. Uh, it, was, it was heartbreaking. Still, two days later, Mallory woke up and seemed okay, just some slight speech and coordination issues. She went to rehab, but a day in, started having seizures. After a couple days in Stormont's ICU, she was flown to University of Kansas Hospital in Kansas City. Mallory had suffered a severe brain injury. They decided to induce her into a coma to basically restart 
her body, her brain, everything. And I really wasn't sure what I was up against. I didn't know if I was going to lose her or she was going to be back to her old self two days later. So it was a, a scary time. It would be two weeks before she started to wake up, and it wasn't much. That the most she could do was open her eyes. Mallory moved to Madonna Rehab Hospital in Omaha. Doctors told her family to expect a two to five year recovery, but they didn't know Mallory. I still remember the first, I want to say week and a half, two weeks of her therapy at Madonna. Her therapy was they stood in front of her, clapped their hands, made loud noises just to try to get her open her eyes. Watching her starting to walk again has probably been one of the most rewarding things to sit back and watch. It's just flat out amazing what she has accomplished to this point. Her family says it's nothing short of a miracle. With faith, hard work, and a community rallying around her, Mallory came home in October. It's sign language for thank you. She's now working to strengthen her voice, and her parents take her to physical and occupational therapy three days a week. The next bridge she'll cross, walking down the hill, on her own, on her wedding day. And Kyle will guide her toward that goal as long as it takes. It's easy. Um, she's the same girl. When you love somebody as much as I love Mallory, this is what you do. You stick with it. You stick together. They're so awesome together. There are a few ways you can help with Mallory's recovery. You can donate to funds through Bank of the Flint Hills at Rossville or Yingling's Auto Body in North Topeka. Also, you can give online for a chance to win a guided fishing trip donated by Lake Talaconi Guide Service in North Texas. They donated that, and I posted the link to do that on WIBW.com. They have Kyle and Mallory have their own way of communicating. They've worked it out. I said, you know, married couples... Some don't even do that after many, many years. Right. And there they are, these two young people, just and even wonderful support. In Mallory's recovery, you know, he's finishing the sentences for her as husbands and wives often do. So they're, they've, got, <laughs> like they've do. got a great connection. <laughs> You might know it as K2 or Spice, sold in bright packages, often labeled natural. But experts say the truth is no one knows for sure what's in it. It's very much a moving target. These chemicals are constantly changing. KBI drug chemistry analyst Patrick Porubsky says tests on synthetic cannabinoids and more recently synthetic opioids showing up in their labs find constantly changing chemical structures. Some are very dangerous. Um, and many of them, the danger is unknown. One of the things they're designed to do is react with these receptors in your brain. And so you know they're going to have a psychological effect on people, but you don't have any idea of how it's going to affect them uh, physically. Stormont Vale hospitalist Dr. Harsha Mule discovered one physical effect. These patients are showing up to the ERs complaining of bleeding complications. Dr. Mule recently co-authored an article in the New England Journal of Medicine with former colleagues in central Illinois. Dozens of patients showed up in their emergency rooms with severe bleeding and no medical explanation for it. Poison control got involved and they discovered the patients had been exposed to synthetic cannabinoids and something in the drugs was severely thinning their blood, far more intensely than the commonly prescribed blood thinner, Coumadin. If a normal number is one, patients on Coumadin, the number is two to three. For patients who got affected from this adulterant, uh, the number went all the way up to 20 and above. And 20 is the highest level that the lab can test. It is definitely life-threatening. The most important complications of that high blood is uh, bleeding into the brain. We call it intracranial bleeds. Uh, the patients can have a spontaneous death. Dr. Moulet says high doses of vitamin K can reverse the effects, but only if given quickly and only if they know to look for it. And be honest, letting us know that you have used it would help us get to you better faster. Also unknown is whether these chemicals are being added on purpose or unknowingly produced as a byproduct of the manufacturing process. We are at a stage where we don't know what chemicals are being used. All we know is these are bad chemicals. Anything could be added to these drugs. Uh, when people purchase a sample of drugs on the street, they have no idea if they're getting exactly what they're, what they're intending to purchase. And so that's one of the reasons that it's so dangerous.